little background about what we're doing and where we're trying to go. One last thing to add too is that we are a very small organization. So um, our publications department is the largest, but we have um, in the low um, 20s of um, employees. It's in flux, in flux right now, so I don't want to give an exact number, but we have less than 25 employees. Um, so when we were looking at using Hypothesis, you know, I've had these questions up here for a while. It's the typical um, things, especially that a small society would look at um, what, what's involved, basically. Costs, what would be involved of our staff? Um, would our communities really enjoy it? Um, are there other ways that we can bring in other departments? Um, what are some of our competitors doing? Um, and not even just competitors, what are some of our um, you know, parallel different people who are publishing um, scientifically but in different fields? So competitors is probably not the best word, but what are some of our peers doing? Um, and the hardest question of all, again, for a small society is, where do we start? I have to say that the hypothesis is never short of amazing. I know how busy everyone on their staff is, and they drop everything um, for training and to give us their ideas and thoughts, and that has been the most amazing part of all of this. Um, so I mentioned um, the plant cell is really where we decided to um, dive in and focus first. This is our flagship journal. We have a lot of eyes on this journal. Um, it is, um, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year, so we have a lot of fun um, activities planned for our annual meeting this year. Um, we have um, a special feature that we're going to be highlighting this summer in the plant cell called um, Reflections on Plant Cell, um, in which um, past authors and editors in chief and just dignitaries from the journal are writing short reflections on the work from the journal that meant the most to them. Um, or whatever, um, and this is an example of the evolution of our use of hypothesis. We plan to heavily use hypothesis. Um, I don't even have this in the slides, and this has changed since the um, presentation I gave with Heather at the beginning of the month. We plan to use hypothesis to um, start discussions um, on those reflection <coughs> articles, but bring people back to the original articles that are being referred to, but then as it turns out, people that were writing the reflections couldn't just write about one article and it's many articles um, often are cited in just the one reflection and we really want to bring people together and discuss the connections because they are making connections that we weren't really thinking about so we would like to let the same thing happen for our readership and our hypothesis users. So this is a way that we really can see a way to push out um, a more overall use of um, hypothesis with our authors, reviewers, editors, um, anyone that's out there. Um, we also can really see too that our early career researchers are excited about this and we have a new um, person on our staff again since um, I gave this last presentation with Heather at the beginning of the month and she is solely devoted to cultivating and finding relationships um, with all of our different constituencies. So that will be part of that evolution. Um, the first thing though that we did dive in to using Hypothesis um, for though is um, another really exciting and special thing that the plant cell does is, um, I mean, I know not everyone in this room is involved with scientific publishing, but um, peer review you know, traditionally has been a very, you know, behind the curtain type of thing, um, very anonymous. Um, people did not publish peer review reports. I will say that we do not have fully, um, fully transparent peer review reports, but this journal, if, um, if we have permission from both the reviewers and the authors, then we go ahead and publish our peer review reports. Again, the reviewers are not identified, but, um, it is a really brave and exciting move for us because in some cases, if papers are very specific, um, even though the reviewers remain anonymous, it can in some cases be clear, you know, who those reviewers might have been. Um, so that's been something that's exciting for us. The challenge though has been in the past two years that we've printed them, um, our online provider, Highwire, um, has not been able to give us a really great way to highlight these um, reports. They're kind of buried, and I'm, I can show you. Um, 
<coughs> this is what a peer review report looks like, but they're kind of buried down at the bottom of the page. Um, it just says peer review report. It's, it's in the supplemental data, and then there's also an another place on the right-hand side of the web page. Again, that's not super duper obvious as to where it appears. So our effort is in linking all of these peer review reports back to the actual um, article. Um, so this is an example of some um, matching um, annotations of our peer review reports. Um, so challenges that we've seen along the way, and I alluded to these a bit, but um, staff time and buy-in, I think we're getting past that. But it's, it's, just, it's just one of these things that everyone's like, yes, hypothesis looks super cool, but we also have journals to get out the door, so you know, whatever. But um, that now they're really seeing and they're saying, oh, hey, you know, what if, you know, how can we use hypothesis in this way? So that that has been slow but steady um, increase in buy-in. Um, our ed board, um, I will get, I will get to, and, you know, we have a new initiative coming up that's really exciting that our ed board is getting more and more excited about this. And I will also mention too that um, our one journal, The Plant Cell, is also interested in um, using hypothesis during the peer review process itself. So that would involve, um, that would involve working with our peer review um, manager, um, our, our uh, vendor for that, which is um, eJournal Press. So we would have to work with them to do that again another time. Um, concern, but also I think it would be worth it in the end. Um, and then another, Challenge. I don't want to say it's a challenge because hypothesis makes it as easy as it can be, but we need to find more and more ways to implement the use of hypothesis than to kind of market out how um, we are using it. I will say that um, our organization on an individual and an organization level is very active um, on Twitter. Um, so I think once we get rolling, um, all of the marketing will just follow from that easy organic um, social media tool. So looking forward, um, again, I mentioned that the plant cell is considering using hypothesis during the peer review process. Um, this is, but this is the project that I am most excited about. So we are going to be um, participating in a pilot program with BioArchive. And again, for those not familiar with BioArchive, just very simply, this is um, an opportunity for um, scientists to deposit their mostly complete or already complete, but it helps scientists to get their work out into the world um, quickly and without having to go through the whole publication process. Um, some journals don't allow it, but our journals do allow submission directly from BioArchive, so um, it, this works for us. So BioArchive actually approached us um, and said, we know you're hypothesis users and we know you support open peer review. Would you be interested in using hypothesis then to post um, all of the peer review uh, reports that you have on articles that had been submitted from BioArchive that are um, freely available there on BioArchive? So we're really excited about this. We haven't gotten started yet, but we're in the initial stages of um, working on this pilot. Um, and this is just a little idea of, um, you know, what BioArchive, an article on BioArchive looks like then with um, <coughs> annotation. Um, also what's up next, plant physiology. This is our largest volume journal. And again, it's a very um, well-respected journal in the plant biology field. Um, so, we have an ed board meeting coming up in June, and once again on our agenda, at this time, this journal does not publish um, peer review reports of any kind, and they've been um, opposed until now. Um, we are hoping um, that a hypothesis demo and also pointing out what is going on on their sister journal, The Plant Cell, will encourage them to maybe move forward with the open peer review. Um, nevertheless, we will be ruling rolling out the tool on plant physiology um, and we'll find other ways um, <coughs> to use it for sure but really we're hoping that um, open peer review takes off with that journal as well um, and again I mentioned um, plant a um, this is our digital ecosystem and indeed um, 
We have lots to offer here. I didn't even mention that we have a podcast. That's what the picture on the right is. Um, th that's our editor-in-chief of, of a sister journal that we have, and then also an ed board member of the plant cell. They have a really engaging podcast that even if you're not a pl plant biologist, um, I can highly recommend called Taproot. That's just an aside. But those are the types of conversations that we're hoping to um, weave into our um, our, our journal um, content and vice versa using hypothesis. And, oh no, I had one more puppy. Oh, oh shoot. Okay, so again, and I have my, um, I have it fixed on my thing here, Heather. I gave Heather, uh, Heather Staines here um, a typo on the slide last time, but I fixed it. So thanks, Heather, um, for doing that. And I just, you know, if, I, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know either now or you can tweet me or email me or whatever. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. It's really informative. Um, it sounds like TPC as your flagship journal would be uh, a little bit of a gamble to introduce hypothesis on first. What were the decisions that led you to that? Or the because they are just so open they are so open to change and doing things differently. And I think also because it is our flagship journal um, tied to that journal, our um, very prestigious uh, researchers and career plant biologists who feel very established in their field. So even like I mentioned with the um, peer review reports, it's possible that one could be identified even though they're anonymous as reviewers and they don't care. I mean, they're just so secure in, in their stature. And they're always looking at ways, though, too. They realize they can't just always ride this um, tradition of excellence. They need to bring in early career researchers. So that's why they're always trying out these new, you know, exciting ideas that would also um, involve others. And they understand the need to keep eyes on our articles and, and so forth. So... Oh, wow, cool. A uh, supportive editorial board. That's awesome. Yes. And I would say, so the, and the reason plant physiology doesn't, again, those are very esteemed um, plant biologists and researchers, but they've just been uncomfortable with a lot of these um, different uh, initiatives. So, My second question is about the bioarchive initiative that you guys are taking. Mm -hmm. um, will the peer review results be posted on preprints that are uh, subsequently rejected? Okay, so that's a really great question, and we are going to discuss that at the next Ed Board meeting in August of the plant cell. I have a feeling that they will be open to that. Um, I also will say, though, that that's part of the conversation that we're having with um, Cold Spring Harbor is um, the host of BioArchive, and the folks there um, haven't even decided if they're going to do that either. So that pilot is actually starting with just the published um, articles and journals. But I would have to say that I think that our, um, our plant cell ed board would be supportive of that, honestly. They're, they're very proud of their um, peer review and, and so forth. So great questions, thank you. Big round of applause for Jennifer.